My life had all the essential ingredients that most people think is going to get you happiness. Great apartment, had a nice car, had a nice job, earning a lot of money in a relationship with someone. I was in this life, which a lot of people might think is success and happiness. But even after having all this, I was still empty. All this effort of life, everything that you do, education, career, business, family, whatever you did, everything was in pursuit of happiness. Is it so? I was living in Melbourne, Australia. I had lived life exactly how it was supposed to be lived, according to people who tell you, I guess parents, teachers, society. I grew up with Indian parents, and if anyone doesn't know, they take education and getting a good job, they value that above anything. So there's a lot of pressure from when I was younger to do well in school, set myself up for success as it may be, have a good job and a stable career. So I did that, I went to school, I did well in high school, went to one of the best universities in Australia, the University of Melbourne. I did my bachelor's degree, four years, master's degree, two years in construction management, got a job, moved up, got another job, got another job, got promoted, and then ended up having a really good job actually, managing construction projects, paid really well, about 100k per year, more than comfortable to live off. But I wouldn't wake up on Monday being like, yeah, let's go. I love my life. It was more just, okay, Monday to Friday, let's get through it. And then waiting for Saturday. And then hopefully something exciting will happen on Saturday and Sunday, which will make up for the rest of my boring week. Sunday night, 5, 6, 7 p.m. would come and I would feel a lot of anxiety and and just sadness because I'm like, ah, oh, weekend's over, it went so fast, gotta start again the whole week, could get through these five days, do it all over again, just repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat. And basically just wait for the weekend every week or wait for the end of the year. I was waiting basically 48 weeks for every weekend and then waiting for the four weeks where I could go on holiday, maybe travel, and I actually then would be really happy. We are definitely the most comfortable generation ever on this planet. But are we also the most joyful generation? I was in this life, which a lot of people might think is success and happiness, and that's maybe what a lot of you are striving for right now. But even after having all this, I was still empty and I was still thinking, okay, what's the next five or 10 years going to bring? I looked at people a bit older than me. I think I was almost 30 at the time. A lot of them were doing the same pattern, waiting for the weekend, drinking a lot on Saturday, being hungover on Sunday and repeating the whole thing again, Monday to Friday, basically living for the weekend. Looked at people a bit older, uh, maybe people with families and kids. A lot of them didn't seem happy either. They seemed like I just had a family because that's the thing I was supposed to do. And now I don't really want it, I guess. I'm happy, I love my children, but mm, could I go back to being single and traveling? Yeah, I'd prefer that. But they just did it because they thought that's the, the right thing to do because that's what society wants us to do. So anyway, I saw myself and I saw, okay, in five years, this could be me. Or in 10 years, this could be me. And I was like, doesn't sound good. Don't think that's gonna make me happy at all. I think it's just gonna be the cycle repeating and repeating and repeating. I need to do something. So I decided to sell everything. I sold everything in my house. I took clothes and stuff that I needed to travel. Sold my car, sold everything. I think I had maybe 45 grand Australian dollars from selling everything and saving. I probably saved maybe a year. Stayed in and didn't go out that much, didn't eat out. I was a bit more conscious with money. And then I quit my job. I said, okay, I'm gonna go see what the world has to offer. I'm gonna travel for a bit and then I'm going to figure out life. Maybe I can do something else. Maybe I can work overseas. The original plan was to go to the States and I thought I'm not inspired here. I'm not motivated here. There's no like new stimuli here for me. Maybe if I go to another country, everything will be so interesting. Even if I'm still working, that'll satisfy that emptiness inside me. I sold everything, started traveling. Plan was to travel like maybe six, seven months before I went to the States and settled down and tried to work there. So I did that, I left. I always knew that, okay, if this doesn't work out for a year, I can just go back to Oz. I can go back to Melbourne, live the same life that I always lived before. I haven't lost anything. I've just done something else for a year. I can always go back to the exactly the same life. I left, traveled Europe for a bit. I got to the US, San Diego, and I was like, okay, I really like this spot. I can surf, everyone's pretty nice. I'm going to stay there and make that my new home. And just when I decided that, COVID hit. There's no way that I could get a work visa because people were actually losing their jobs then. I basically had to leave and that's when I bought a car, drove down to Mexico. And that's where I spent the next year and a half of my life where basically everything changed. 
I arrived in Mexico, crossed the border. The US dream was over. Went over the border, was hanging out there, and I was down. The 45 grand was now down to maybe three. I was thinking, okay, I'm just gonna hang out here for maybe a month. COVID stuff's gonna blow over. And then once it's over, I'll just go back in, get my visa, and then I can start working. But it dragged on, it dragged on, and I don't need to explain the story, but went on for another year and a half. After waiting for a few months, I decided probably time to give up and move on, think about the next stage of my life. In this time when I was there, I'd be doing a little bit of work on an online platform, freelancing platform, just odd things, voice recording, transcription, things like that. Just little things which was bringing in dribs and drabs of money. But then because I had been doing work for them a lot, all those little, little jobs, 20 bucks here, 30 bucks here, 10 bucks here, they saw that I was doing good work and they offered me a big a job and they said okay we want you to do some transcription so i started doing that the job kept going and then i was able to do that over basically the next year and a half where i was able to get an income again and support myself as i traveled through mexico all up and down the coast pacific coast of mexico just with all my stuff in the car and my surfboard and just hitting all the spots on there surfing meeting a whole heap of amazing people and at this point i would say i was really really happy meeting new people every day, the excitement of making a new friend every day or hearing a new story every day, opening my mind to a new perspective every day was really exciting. Being able to wake up in the morning, grab the surfboard, jump in, get my exercise in, get my peace morning kind of meditation. And because I was in a cheaper country, I'm not in Australia anymore, where, you know, a meal costs 20 bucks and a coffee costs like eight bucks. I was in Mexico where a meal might cost $5, coffee might cost $1. So the cost of living immediately went down, cost of rent went down. And so I didn't have to work as much. That left time for a lot more activities that I've been putting off for a long time. I played guitar a lot from when I was a kid and I started doing that again. I started playing basketball three times a week, going to gym like five times a week. All that physical activity just made me so happy mentally and made me feel so good physically because normally I'd be spending 45, 50 hours sitting at a desk doing nothing. And I think honestly, in my opinion, that's good for no one. I guess what changed my life was this idea that was something else out there and that this life that we all think is the epitome of success to sit in an office. It doesn't matter if I earn 100,000, 200,000, 500,000, 10 million, you can put whatever number you want there. What does the money mean when I'm not happy and most of my time is wasted sitting in an office? I'd easily trade making a quarter of that for being able to walk around outside, meet new people every day, being in nature. Especially with COVID, definitely had a lot of negative effects, but one positive effect that it had was it showed businesses, we don't need to lock people in these offices. People can work remote, they can work while traveling, they can work from home. Just think about it. If you're not happy, think, is the job that you're doing now the job you wanna do for the rest of your life? If not, find another job. There's plenty of ways to make money now. Go and learn a new skill. I'm making videos now. I'm working as a professional videographer. I have clients now, and that's paying more than enough to live, live comfortably. And I basically just learned that by myself. I didn't go to university. I have no degree. There's plenty of more things like that. Just jump on, you can do a quick Google search. The digital nomad way is changing the world. And I think you can actually bring a lot of happiness to everyone, to you watching at home. If you're not happy with the way that your life is going right now, I'd say think outside the box, especially if you're young, without kids, without debts, save up enough, get a good education to the point where you have something to fall back on and then take a risk. Who gives a shit if it goes bad? You've maybe traveled the world, try to find something else for a year or two. At least then, when you're 40, 45, 50, you can think back and be like, hey, when I was 30, I tried to do something different. Didn't work out, but at least I can rest easy knowing that I tried. As long as fear of suffering is there within you, you will never walk your life with full stride. It'll always be half a step. If you at least try and give it a chance, you'll meet some people along the way, you'll find out something new about yourself along the way, and your life will change for the better.